If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. What a great opening. Thank you. I actually began real estate in 2005 in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was with Keller Williams. I My first home I ever sold was a three and a half million dollar listing, which I can tell more about that. I think it was just my excitement and enthusiasm, and I didn't know better, right? <laughs> so that takes you a long way. But I moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 2007. My passion is luxury. Even when I owned my own business, or own the Remax franchise, it um, I always sold real estate. So truly, for almost twenty years, all I've done is luxury real estate, as well as be a sports and entertainment um, realtor. And we can talk about that because I believe in niches. I believe they are so important, whether they're in the luxury division or just you know. But with that selling of luxury real estate, I can honestly say I've done every part of real estate, meaning short sales to foreclosures, to I've sold a $30,000 home and I've sold a $10 million home. And I think that is the journey of real estate, which really teaches us all about the business even more. So I know, uh, so how I've done this is I've got three uh, really short segments. Hopefully they'll be impactful for you to take away something today to implement in your business and to take it to the next level. At the end of those segments, I would love some feedback. We've got some questions we can brainstorm and then go to the next. And I would like to touch a little bit of why at the end of why I'm so passionate about the EXP Luxury Program. For me, after I ended my Remax franchise, which was a very good to me, I had an amazing team. I just felt like with the Remax name and the brand, it wasn't where real estate's going. And obviously, with Glenn Sanford and this amazing company of EXP, once you see it, it's very hard to unsee it, right? But I was still very careful. It took a lot of time and prayer for me to really get behind a brand because I felt, I mean, for almost 20 years, this is all I've done was luxury. So I do put my name behind this brand and my experience because of really what it brings, the heart behind the people. I love how agent centric we are. I just got off of a meeting with um, all of the global leaders. Glenn was leading it in the trenches. And it's just amazing what, you know, this company is still evolving and is still at the very top. So of course, I'm passionate about it. So thank you. So let's get into this. How many people ask me, what is luxury? And, you know, I think luxury is many things in different markets as well. Um, it's, you know, I'm in, I've been in Atlanta and I've been in Nashville, Tennessee selling. I'm now, I'm also a Florida broker and, but there are, all those markets are different as well. And they're especially different when we're talking about other countries, or if you're comparing to California, really what I like to say is luxury is it's the top 10% of your market or it's three times the average sales price in your market. But again, it could mean different things. And I've listed on here, you know, some of these that you can take away of, you know, but it definitely has exclusive. It, it, I can't talk today. It's exclusive for sure. Um, it's a status symbol. But all of these things lead into what is luxury and, of course, creating that luxury brand. Uh many misconceptions about uh, luxury. And I don't know if any of these strike home with you that, you know, maybe you feel like you need to be wealthier before you can sell a, well, uh, you know, a, a more expensive home. You know, you need to live in the big home before you can get those clients. And some of that is true, meaning, 
you know, your sphere sometimes starts you off in luxury, but I believe to be a luxury agent as a career, as your as you develop, it takes more than that. And if you have got the proper tools in place, you could definitely break into that market. So very proud to say one of the vendors we just got into the luxury program is Tiffany's. But Tiffany's is, a, I love this example, hey, I love Tiffany's, <laughs> isn't it the greatest box to give to, uh, you know, at closing, I think. But um, more than that is when you see Tiffany's, you think of this timeless classic luxury. I mean, would we agree with that? That's like a, you know, if you look at Ritz Carlton, you think luxury. Uh, we are definitely trying to make our brand with EXP Luxury that that brand that will be seen throughout the world. Uh, we are very strict on the colors, the signage, so that when you're in Paris or Italy or California or even in Nashville, Tennessee, when you see that sign, that means luxury. So that is very important to us as we are building, you know, that brand. But when you think about the lifestyles, um, this is to me goes deep. And if you're thinking of how I can break into luxury is there's many different ways. And we're going to touch on a lot of those throughout the next few minutes. But, um, you know, it is that lifestyle and how you can effectively get in there, raise your price point and take your business to the next level. So, um, yes, it's price point and mindset. And again, we've touched on what is that price point is depending on your area. I've got places in Canada. I've got places that I've talked to agents that 500 to 750 may be the luxury in that area. You know, we also have, I don't know if you know, Ed Kaminsky. He's amazing. He lists, you know, he's in California listing $30 million homes. That is a definite another level. That's that ultra luxury level, but there are ways to get in there. And, and the, one of the things I love, and we're going to talk about this, I'm passionate about personal branding is it needs to reflect in your personal brand. And that is a way to increase your price point, have more content on social media. And to me, that is such a game changer in the luxury market. So uh, luxury agents, there's a lot of expectations when we go to list a home. Now, whether that's, you know, I've listed a lot of million dollar homes, but like even when you get to the $3 million mark, that $5 million mark, that expectation of what we bring to the table is, of course, so much more. Where I think agents, when I had my own company, we um, I used to tout online all the time that we were the elite because, you know, we had more transactions than anyone on average, if you compared agents to companies. And but a lot of that was teaching that luxury mindset, whether you are in luxury or not, because let's face it, where we are in the industry, the more service that we give to our clients, whether it's a $300,000 home or a 3 million is only going to build your brand. So I am a believer in, yes, it's the luxury agent brand, as I say it, but it's also will help you across the board and building your brand, getting more listings and getting uh, them sold. Um, when you look at breaking into luxury, I'm a, um, I guess, a geek when it comes to knowing everything about everyone. I moved to Nashville in 2007. Kathy was one of my first friends because I didn't know anybody. And um, one of the things I started learning is, you know, the market, knowing the people. And and guys, I didn't even know how to drive downtown Nashville from Brentwood, which is a suburb. I mean, I knew nothing. And I made it in this town not knowing anything. So I want to Bring, share those nuggets with you if you're thinking, I want to be luxury or how do I do this? I went to a city where I did not know a soul and I started gathering information. Uh, you know, where who's leading the market? Who are the top agents in my market? What are they doing that I'm not doing? So a lot of those things play into point. I always say my Starbucks story because 
I'm not so much of the Starbucks Starbucks girl now, but 2007 I was. So I'm new in Nashville, Tennessee. And one of the things I started doing, which was a life changer for me, um, I honestly probably would not be here or on any stage if I had not started doing this back then, is started meeting three people a day. And I know you probably heard that from a lot of people, but it works. So my first year, I committed to three people a day, five days a week. And those agents and it wasn't just agents I met. I met lenders. I met anybody that would have 15 minute conversation with me. And those people truly are my friends, my supporters, and really led me to big career changers. So if you have been in the business as long as me, or maybe you're new, or maybe you've been longer and think I've been there, done that, to me, this this is so powerful and it ne it it keeps on going. In my new role now, I don't do Starbucks, but I do my Google Meets and I try to reach out to those that are not effectively in my orbit because that's when we start exploding and really going to the next level with our business because you never know that one conversation of where it will take you next. Um, when you look at your geographic marketing, um, we talk about this within any geographic farming, I'm going to say, but if you're targeting just from a luxury standpoint, I want you to look at your market size, your budget that you could get into. Um, I just spoke in Austin and I know we laugh at the mail mailings and all that, like, you know, we're so tech, tech now, um, in this world, but she stood up and she gave a example. She chose to spend, this is a lot of money, but she divided it out through the year and she got sponsors. She, she pulled together $15,000 for a mailing budget for the year. And within that, she changed her whole career around just by being very strategic. When I've got this budget to mail minimum monthly for one year, I feel like so many people like, you know, up, oh, not going to do that. She budgeted this and she grew her business by $10 million in volume. I mean, it's incredible, but she stayed on it. She did the follow-ups. So when you are looking at how to expand is definitely having a plan in place. These, you know, and I've got, there's no universal answer because there's not a one size fits all, but I'm trying to give you some things to think about of successes that people are having while they're expanding. Increase awareness of your brand and services. Again, this goes back out to just targeting what you can do. We always have, um, we talk about these things, but what's the power behind it all? The power comes behind, are you actually going to do it? How consistent are you? Consistency is the key to win anything, especially breaking into the luxury market because it just really takes that one luxury listing or one higher price point. Maybe you're already in luxury, but you're just trying to push up. And, you know, it took me years to get that $5 million listing. It took me years to get that, you know, $7 million listing after that. It took the marketing, it took staying at it, but you definitely can have a an increase this year if you put some of these things in, into practice. So, um, these are some of the key takeaways that how I have always said, okay, all of this, I like to have a win for you. Part of our luxury program, and I, I'm just talking about what we have, this is not honestly not a sales pitch, it's just answers to some pains like, how do I do all this? Okay, I want to do it, how do I do it? Um, we have a targeted zip code marketing program. We've got luxury postcards ready to go. I found if, the, if it's easy and ready and you can grab, then you will do something with it. Strategic campaign planning is crucial and presentations of expired listings. Um, you know, we try to do ready-made presentations to win over clients and, and discuss those. So those are some of my takeaways. Now I want to hear from a few of you and then we'll go into another subject. But does anybody have any experience in getting into local boards, clubs, events, and luxury market? Like, can you see, like, it just takes one network to expand, you know, your luxury career? 
Any feedback on that one? Come I, I on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carrie. I don't have any feedback on that, but I'm curious when you sit down with all these, you know, three people a day, just how that conversation rolls and, and what exactly are you presenting? Is EXP, ha is it this kind of a presentation, but not with a client? What are you doing with them? And what does that look like when you sit down with them for 15 minutes? Well, back in 2007 and fast forward to 2024, I do the same thing. And it's not me pitching me. It's, um, hey, you know, hey, Sean, I am so excited. I'm the new VP of EXP Luxury. I know you've been a part of EXP for so long. And I would just like to pick your brain. Like, wh what do you love about EXP? What's your success in this? And how can you and I collaborate and take our businesses to the next level? That's basically all I say. Now, you're going to come in hot and talk about all your wins and all the things you love. And through that, nine times out of 10, we're going to find something that you and I click on. And now I'm going to say, okay, let's do that. I love that. Oh, you have the freedom group. Well, what if I go speak there? What if I, you know, talk about luxury there? I try to, if I get a win, I want you to have a win too, you know? So that's, those are the whole point of it is not to really, sometimes we don't walk away with a plan, but we walk away with a connection. And, so and what about if you're visiting with a, a lender or a title company, does it, how does it vary there? Well, you know, I have been very loyal over the years through, you know, I think I've had like in 10 years, like three lenders, but I had a lot of friends out there that if that, if my preferred lender didn't work, I still had those, I had those supporters and I guess I look at life a little weird. <laughs> you don't always have to have something from somebody, but just that like on Facebook, that little rah rah, or that that means a lot too. Just support and collaboration. So it wasn't like I. I mean, I couldn't have every lender to sponsor me. I couldn't have every title company. I had one title company in ten years. But I did have a lot of title companies support me, our agents, our companies. So that's how I look at it. The power of connection is the game changer. And you all know this. I look at Kathy and what you've all built is amazing, right? And it's still, it's the power of connection. But if I take it just to business of just how to grow your luxury, it's just, to me, it's tremendous. And it's the biggest game changer um, always has been in my business. And I see it now. I mean, I reach out to people across the globe, very hard to understand. I always make sure I have translation on um, reading it. But you know, now when I go into those meetings, it's a different environment than me walking in. And all it is, is more than nine times out of 10, I'm just saying, tell me about you, tell me about you and how I can help. And then that opens everything up. Great question. Um, well, I can kind of keep moving through these, but basically. Sure, I, did, I did want to ask you one question about that. So if we take it a step further and somebody's trying to get into the luxury space, um, maybe their sphere is not all luxury level um, people, right? What, right? what advice, I guess, would you have for people who it's like, hey, I mean, would it still be number one, just go grab coffee, tell me about you, you know, um, learn about them, make that connection? Um, or what would be your strategy if somebody just really is in the world of luxury sphere? So you're asking like, what's the benefit to them if they're not in luxury? No, not the benefit. How do you jump into, how do you start finding those people best? Um what are a couple of strategies to find those people best if their network and their sphere is not luxury people? Right. Like if you're looking to sell more luxury real estate. Right. I, I am targeted, but I'm also, people will lead you to other people, you know? And at the end of those conversations, I say, who do you know that I think that would be a good fit for me? 
And that may be, and that makes them feel so good because we've just had coffee and maybe like at the, I'm a giver. I would like to give. I feel bad at the end of a conversation if I have nothing to give to you. But if I can give you a name, if I can give you a contact, if I can connect you with someone, I feel like, okay, I have given you something. And believe it or not, that is most people. They will because it, it's nothing on them. And their their mind throughout your conversation has now triggered to say, I, I have somebody for you. I have. And that has won for me so many times. It may not be Kathy has something for me, but Kathy knows somebody that will absolutely help explode my career. And so that's hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was great. And then Colleen put in there, you know, just engage in luxury clubs and events and, you know, different areas where some of those higher level people might be. Yes. Absolutely. One thing, one thing gets me thinking about like, like coming up here, we have this every year here in Colorado Springs. I know this has gone on. It, it goes on more and more across the country. These parade of homes, we have a parade of homes coming up. So it's all the builders and, and, you know, and there's all different levels, but there's definitely like this luxury level of these builders showing off their new homes, Yes, you know, and it's a big thing it goes on for three weeks and people buy tickets for it. And, you know, you can get a $20 ticket and go see all the homes and you get it stamped and they do all these different things. Yes. And there's so many ways for like agents to get involved yes. in that and to be around that. And it's the vendors and it's, it's all the, the vendors that are, that are supplying things for these different, you know, that level of home. There's so many ways to get in there and just be around those people. You're going to get connections from that. You know, well, vendors, as you said, vendors is key. Builders are amazing. I, I would meet builders left and right, ended up getting small subdivisions. I mean, it's just, it's a game changer. And here's the thing. Uh, it's like you're planting seeds. Not every seed's going to happen right then, but that seed may sprout in a year. And I've always taught in a year, you're still going to need that business. You're still going to want it. So start planting those seeds, water them, follow up. It does happen. I mean, it works. It, guaranteed it works. But it's talking about what you just said, Jeff, that goes more into our beating the competition. Um, when you are focused on your business and doing, like we said, builders, vendors, anybody that is in the realm of real estate, it doesn't. And I've always taught it is, you know, you're in the center and we have all these spokes. Think of a wheel. And um, you just need to be clicking all these spokes off, watering those. And it doesn't take very long of today. You don't have to go to Starbucks. You can have a quick meet. I do believe in the power of in real life as well. So if you are and you can do both, I think you'll, you know, go e even more. But of course, when we're being the competition, we are looking at, um, you know, what agents in your area? And I truly, really did this. I mean, I was like, okay, who, who is owning this luxury market? Who, who do I need to beat out for a listing appointment, basically, to get my foot in the door? And this works. I think you do have to be strategic. You know, I did. I do research. I research now. Right now, I'm like, okay, who other? What other companies have great luxury programs, and how can EXP beat them? I mean, I, we always have to look to me, what is, some people say, I don't worry about the competition. I just, you know, worry about myself. That's good to a point, but I still think we need to know what's going on and how do you rate yourself in stacking up to them? Um, you know, we kind of know this, the MS, MLS and sales data, physical presence and advertising. I'm a believer in advertising. Uh, of course, now we have social media, we've got video, you can be, um, you know, some of this is the traditional way. Um, we were going to touch a little bit on social media because I'm passionate about it. And it was hard for me. I was I was the one that I was scared to death to do a video. <laughs> you know, and to send it. I used to say, I'm sending it to the world. Oh my gosh. And, um, but you know, it works, right? And so we have to get out of our comfort zone and do it. And people were like, oh, I thought you would love that. No, I hated it. But um, anyway, so, but advertising is a must. Getting your message out is a must. 
Uh, of course, boosting your online presence, which we all know, and there's many ways to do that, which I'm going to talk specifically about your personal brand and really how luxury helps um, that. I mean, most people love luxury things, right? I mean, and if you can find your niche or your niche, however you say it, in that, um, it really will help you take your business to the next level. Um, I laugh at this. I've always thought I was a disruptor. Um, when I uh, left Keller Williams and bought Remax, that was a disruptor moment. Um, my advertising, I jumped on top of the balloon and did this big picture that stayed at Bridgestone for 10 years. And oh, I'm sorry, seven years. And um and Remax was calling me saying, take that down. That's not part of what you do. You don't sit on the balloon. I'm like, I'm sitting on the balloon advertising it. What does it matter? But I refuse to take it down. I'm like, uh-uh, you will have to pay and pry that down. So I was, I've always somewhat been a disruptor in the good way, in a good way, um, and, and put myself out there, but it works. So I want you to think about, you know, how can you be a bigger presence in your market? And some of it is doing those videos, doing what is somewhat painful for most of us, but putting yourself out there, it guarantee 1000% works. Um, I laugh at this because I told you about my first listing I ever got was the three and a half million. What I didn't tell you is it was the Keller Williams model at the time. This was 2005. My a lady sponsored me, basically, and I love her. We are besties to this day. We're not in the same companies, but we have always stayed in touch. Well, it was her listing. They fired her and hired me. So how about that? And still navigate and still have fun and us still be the best. But what happened was she um, she was that big agent. She was older than me. She was that she was the one to beat. But she got lazy. She got complacent in her own market. So if you are one of uh, an agent, like we've been many years in the business, there's always that that someone coming up behind you that's going to take it. So my takeaway from that is it still teaches me keep at your game. We can never slow down. I mean, especially in the market we're at, I believe wholeheartedly, you you know, complacence, there's no room right now for complacency, that's for sure. And to keep, you know, going to the next level. Uh, we've gone over this a little bit, but other ways to disrupt your target market, you know, reach out to an underserved segment. There's always that tech savvy, uh, unfortunately, and I'm not tech savvy. I have to really work at it. Um, you know, I get stressed if I have to share the screen, so I'm not tech savvy, <laughs> but um, I've had to learn and I've had to like get in the game. Otherwise we're going to be left behind. And of course, superior expert content, which I believe luxury is easy to do that. You know, a lot of people like to show and see the luxuries. So here's just some key takeaways, knowledge, I say passion between passion and just my will to win is truly how I got my first listing and stayed in luxury. I think when you can show your passion for this industry, it's contagious, you know, and I hope to not step on anybody's feet when I say this. I, I do not like on social media when I see realtors complaining about our business. I'm like, we have other consumers listening. We have others. No, we need to be positive. You know, everybody's busy in their job. We don't need to complain about our busyness. So that is just one of my pet peeves. I like, I'm, but I'm positive. I want them to see what we, you know, our value in this industry as a realtor to me is very important. So some of the disrupting target markets, premium advertising partnerships, um, we have a digital um, format that truly goes to 80 plus international sites. It's amazing. And when we show sellers or if we're doing a listing presentation, it's mind boggling to them because it's not, we're just not saying it. They can go online and see their homes on 80 plus digital sites 
and actually get feedback of how many eyes are on those. So that's powerful, I think. Uh, E-newsletters, exclusivities, and magazine features. Um, you know, we offer so many up front for just digital ads, but there is a feature that you could pay for the ad, but just for the service of being a luxury member, we have Mansion Global, James Edition, Haven, all these that if we have time, I'll go through some of those later. But this is some that we try to then go back and cure some of these pains that I see agents are having so that they, our luxury agents, can truly grow their business. So uh, what's any feedback on this part? Sean, Kathy, Jeff, anything? as we're building. So how many of you have niches? Do we have a show of hands or I need to see the chat? I can't see it. Um, I am a true believer in the niche because for me, my niche was uh, sports and entertainment. But let's see, let me get back on here. Um, and you can see some of these right here. Um, but others that are out there, or maybe it's the seniors, we've got the sports, maybe it's the doctors. Uh, I was in a meeting in Vancouver and somebody came out and she was brand new. Uh, she wanted to join luxury right out of the uh, bat. She wanted her brand. She was a dental hygienist and she was just became a rock star really within six months because what she did is she took the targeting mailers and she just went back to her whole sphere of dental hygienists who then shared with their, I guess, clients that came in to get their teeth clean. And she's now got this great business going. So there's the many ways to look at it. Uh, again, I think a niche, you can have many niches. You don't need just one. I think really some of the top agents I've taught had even seven to 12 niches that they were really good at. Uh, I believe more of before you start developing some of these others is to get really good at the one or, or two, or maybe you have three, but really be great at those. But those could be like, you own this golf course community. You are great at golf course communities. You know everything about it from the HOA to the pricing and all that, but there's different ways to you know develop this. Um, in Tennessee, I had one agent that well, this was mine. Um, this was when I was five years with the, um, uh oh, let's see, what am I doing here? Uh, this was my five years with the NHL. That was definitely a great experience. Um, now, let's keep in mind, I paid royalty for that <laughs> account. It was a pay to play account. But where I like to uh, really give insight about that, whether it's this account or anything, I paid a lot of money for it, but I had to service it. It wasn't just given to me as of I paid for it. And then you had to fight for those clients. You had to service them. And, um, you know, and I'm very passionate on teaching some of those. We laugh about the pickleball rage. Hey, guys, a lot of people are going hot in the pickleball. It's a great niche, right? Um, so when I talk about niches and really quick, cause I know our time is you all have what you love in life. A niche needs to be what you truly enjoy because then you're going to be able to explode that, right? Um, whether it's pickleball, riding horses, golf communities, cars, whatever it is, exploit that because then you're going to attract your tribe. You're going to be passionate about it. You're going to be able to have content that you can share on social media as you grow it. Um, I do, is your niche big enough? Um, you know, I have, like I said, taught a lot of agents over the time. What the story I was going to tell you is one came to me, she was passionate about horses and she actually uh, would drive her horses out to Texas from Tennessee, do rodeos. So she ended up, I said, we'll use that. Let's, let's make a campaign on this. We named the horse. She started the horses on social media. She showed herself riding uh, and she went hard into land and equestrian. Her biggest property that when we first started was like a million and a half dollars. By the end of this campaign, six months to a year later, she had increased her business by $20 million 
because she was getting two to three, four million dollar equestrian farms all over Tennessee. But she made herself the expert on that. So think of a niche that you, like I said, you love that you can make a splash because it's not only that, it creates content. It creates everything to really take your um, business to the next level. Of course, it gives you the edge and the niche marketing. So that's a little bit about that. I'm trying to speed it up a little bit because I'm a talker. Um, let's see. Let me put this down. I can't see my screen because of my uh, chat. Um, sorry, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. All right. There we go. So we're breaking into luxury. We've kind of touched on this. Uh, opportunities. Where are they? This is a big topic. I do want to address this. I love all things fashion. So you will always see me dressed up in high, high heels. Right, Kathy? I mean, the higher heels, the better. But that does not have to be everyone in luxury. Um, I get, you know, look the part. I do think you a look, a brand is part of your brand. But I have been with ladies and men that have been truly successful all around the world. We all look different. We all dress different. Some people wear flats. Some people wear whatever. I have, I have jeans, blazers, whatever your look is. Where I go for this is your image, though, is the image you're portraying. So whether it is your blue jeans and blazer or I still think it needs to be presentable, but I always have to preference because if you're seeing me, which I'm on camera now, so who knows, but because you can't see me, but I'm, I'm always dressed up. But that was my image that I wanted to portray for my luxury clients. But again, you can be very luxe and sell a lot higher price points than even I have by your image. But I do think looking the part is is powerful. Um, who I, I, I love hands showing, but I can't see everybody, but I'm still going to ask the question who feels they're not luxury, but what we call near luxury, near luxury, maybe, you know, that price point, let's just say a million plus is luxury, but you're more in the 600, 750, 800 range consistently. That would be near luxury. I think that is an amazing place to be. Uh, many times in our market, that is the bread and butter of our market. And it's easy then to catapult to the next level. So if you are that near luxury, it's I speak on this a lot in our masterminds of constantly how can we increase that and use that to your benefit. So the advantages are it is obviously less competition. Um, the growing home prices and commissions, meaning they're going to either they're going to usually move up. Um, of course, I've got your clientele will be the next, but you're going to also gain experience. We put social proof because, hey, if you put it on Internet, isn't it true? Right. <laughs> Everything on Facebook and Instagram is true. But I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. But it does. Remember, when we do something on social media, somebody looks at it for two seconds, but it's still branded right here because you're like, oh, you know, oh my gosh, Sean's just sold a you know $3 million house. Wow. But And we keep scrolling, but it's still in our head, right? And the next time we see he's done something, it's like, bam, wow. So I think um, use those experiences of the near luxury because they will take you to the next. The other is run the same playbook. And that's why I think it, like this luxury, if you can get that luxury mindset and really that you need, in my opinion, you would go to a $500,000 listing with the same mindset as a 5 million. Because if you're giving that $500,000 listing, that kind of service, that white glove, that white label, then you're, you're practicing for when you get that higher listing, but you're also creating raving fans in your own market. That is your bread and butter. So I'm very passionate on running the same systems, improving those systems as you're taking your business to the next level. These are some of the breakdowns of the most common age brackets. I think, you know, some of these slides may be, you know, the age bracket, I don't feel like is that anymore, but 
you know, there's definitely an old money, new money. That's for sure. There's definitely different people. You know, when I, why do I love athletes? They're easy to work with. They're going to let me be the boss. They're going to say, Hey, what do you think? And you do it. Now, is that the mindset of when I work with a CEO? Absolutely not. The CEO is going to tell me what to do, what I need to have it priced at. And that's their mindset. They're that high dominant person. So uh, same old money is completely different from new money. And I've I've spent a lot of time on really breaking those down because it does matter of how we react, how, what they expect um, in making a successful you know, transaction for this. Avoid stereotypes. Um, I cannot tell you the times I've dealt with. Actually, to me, the wealthier they are, the less discreet, you know, like the one that's out in front and you think, oh my gosh, they're going to buy <laughs> the most expensive house. They're the ones that don't. The one that's very discreet, they're the ones that's you know, has all the money and is just going to write us a check in cash. So I'm very careful of, you know, never judge a book by its cover. We can leave it at that. Um, these are some of the different ways, as we've touched on some of these, of, of luxury. And luxury comes in many forms. So definitely, maybe one of these resonates with you of how to really grow your business. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip through some of this because I know we've got 15 minutes. Um Okay, so let's talk about my favorite thing are social media. How many of you have your Facebook going and think it's perfect? I think Facebook's hard. They've changed a lot of the algorithms. Um, I have a personal and I have a business. The business is the one, I, it took me 10 years, but I grew it to 85,000 people or 84, something like that, followers. Um that's just, but those were through a lot of paid ads now, because I would always try to boost those homes that would make my clients happy. And I could show them then how many eyes were on those. Uh, Facebook is, is difficult sometimes because you don't get as many likes. To me, it's not about likes. It's still, you still have eyeballs on it. So I'm a believer in putting it out there. LinkedIn is one of, to me, the place to be because it has not as much traffic. Uh, you don't have as much competition. You will never get a lot of likes until you start building it. It, it is a community. You will get some feedback, but it just takes a long time. It takes consistency. But remember, it's not as congested as Instagram and all some of these other sites. But if you want a win, make sure um, you've got your account out there. I think it's just powerful to use LinkedIn right now. And um, we're really saying move that forward. Facebook, Instagram lives, I think are a big win. Uh, how many of you know John Tsai? He's, um, he was the president of Canada. He, I was out at Vancouver with him. And we were so tired at the end of the day, like we were just done. You know, when you do these events, like three days later, you're like, I'm out. Don't talk to me anymore today. And so I, he was like, let's do one live. Let's do one live. I'm like, OK. And so we did it over 15,000 views, like, you know, within, I don't know, three hours or so. It was crazy. So I do think this works, especially for our homes. And again, that's, you know, putting ourselves out there. I know, I know Kathy does them. I know a lot of you do them, but I think it is something we have to, you know, get used to and, and make ourselves do it even more. Instagram for realtors, um, you know, you see it. I think it's, it's huge. I think Instagram, we, well, I talked to eXp marketing earlier this morning and, you know, they were like, Instagram's one of our biggest channels because it's, it's so used. So I would love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, this is my Facebook following. Um, let's see, let me cruise through. Obviously use video, which we all know, we've said that for years, but I think it's more important now than ever uh, to really get that out there. So um, any feedback, I'm on pause and open it up to questions and just see um, cause we have a lot more, but I know we only have 10 minutes and I'm rattling on. I want to make sure I'm answering some specific questions for you, but, um, to recap, I mean, the personal branding, the social media, the really being targeted and going after this business. 
I'm just telling you, and I'm always here. You don't have to be in the luxury program to ask me a question. I would love to help you in any way, but it does work and it does take your business to the next level. You know, one thing that comes to my mind is, have you seen agents have success with, uh, we've talked, we've done a lot of teaching here uh, around YouTube, Mm -hmm. around becoming the known luxury agent in your area on YouTube. Have you seen some of that? I noticed you mentioned, you know, you didn't mention. And I didn't have that in there and I'm adding that to the slides and thank you, Kathy, for bringing that up. Absolutely powerful. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually about to start my own podcast, but in any of you, I encourage to do it and it doesn't have to, I'm going to make it simple. Like I'm, I want this big, glossy, fabulous podcast, but it's better to do something. It's better to have these conversations, me and Kathy, let's talk luxury, take that, put it on YouTube, slice it up, have your short, put it on Instagram and all that YouTube. Absolutely. I believe is the number one because you can then take that and put it on the LinkedIn, Instagrams and everywhere else. So great question. Um, Most of the big agents that I talk to that truly convert their leads online, they do have a nice YouTube presence because, you know, and it stays out there forever. The algorithms on YouTube are so amazing for this. And especially I want to say for realtors, you know, and we, you know, I should be doing better on YouTube. So we're making a pack like I got to get through EXP con. As soon as I get through that, that is my next um, mountain to conquer is YouTube. So great question. I'm going to go to the biggest thing. There's so much within it um, that just, but as a listing, as a listing agent for almost 20 years, and that's all I've done. I'm a straight listing agent. Um, This program blew me away because they do get a dedicated listing website for that address. So if you had 10 homes, you would have 10 different websites dedicated to that, that you can personalize, you can put different things in there. It's amazing to keep up. Uh, This is our look, our sign, our things. But the, to me, the powerhouse behind it is this page right here, because as a listing agent, I would spend I mean, it depended on the house. I mean, I've spent five, eight thousand dollars before if I'm marketing a three to four million dollar home. If it's a million dollar home, maybe I don't know, two thousand um, dollars. For this program is twenty five hundred dollars annually, but one listing to me pays for that in full because to get this. As an as a normal agent, just when I was at Remax, I would go in to get it, and I would say, "Okay, you're in Mansion Global, and you're in Unique Homes. That's all I offered. Those two, and then I offered my personal stuff, but I didn't offer this stuff. This we're offering them right here about twenty five to thirty thousand dollars of digital advertising, all that you're getting for one price. So just saying, Kathy, you're coming up against me." And we're in the same company, but if I can offer them all this, you see what I'm saying? It's powerful. So back to Mike on your question, if you could offer them this, would that not um, get out of the way of some of your, hey, I may have not have sold a lot of $3 million homes before? That is not even a conversation if you come in with the confidence that this is where this is. And guess what? All you have to do is put the seller's address, email address in, and every Friday, you don't have to do a thing. Every one of these emails back to your seller, letting them know like, hey, this is how many eyes that were on your property. So to me, it's it's just amazing. Um, you know, you would have the confidence to win it, you know, and that's where I'm excited about this. We just picked up Haven. Haven is in 140 plus countries. 5 million average net worth, you know, all of these programs. Well, I was trying to show you another one. This is, and I'll end with this, the the platform, and I'm just showing you tools. I promise I'm not, I would love for you to all join, but these are just tools to help you grow your business. And like this, these takes 30 seconds to create on your dashboard. That's how simple they made it. Because if you, you can take it from your MLS and just literally hit a button 
and it forms this. Now you can then print it or show it digitally, but it's absolutely amazing. But you can also manually upload it if you're trying to get a presentation. The guy that, let me back this up and show where, I wanted to show you one thing. Um, this book right here is a hardback book. So the guy that I helped get the $5 million listing, we had this book made. Um, and imagine going in and leaving your seller um, for this property, this book, it has his logo on it, EXP, and it goes through the whole listing marketing plan for you that you can customize with your sales your past clients, your testimonials. So we've tried to do some amazing products that help you win your listings because that's what it's all about, right? And now with the new things going down with NAR, we do have a complete buyer portal as well. I always speak from a listing standpoint, but we have the buyer presentations as well. So any questions on any of that? And tell me, do you like that? I mean, is it, I think it's awesome. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to jump into, um, you know, Harriet and I talked about this cause we don't make these Tuesdays a sales pitch at all. And we're very yeah. and I'm, about I'm, that. I'm, and so, no, I asked you, but because I feel like, um, I, I feel like if you want to be in a, in the commercial space and you're with EXP, I mean, not the commercial, the luxury space and you want to, and you're with EXP to me, this is almost a must be a part of our luxury division just to get your hands on this stuff to be able to I mean it could be your very first luxury listing you've ever gone into but when you go in with these kind of marketing material I mean it makes you look like an amazing expert you win you win the yeah. listing and yeah. I haven't even told you all of it that's how yeah. Amazing yeah. it is yeah, uh, I do want to open it up tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow we're having a mastermind. It's we have a member mastermind that's locked down for only members. But tomorrow's mastermind, it's Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, feel free to jump in. We're talking about the international market. I have one of the international leaders on there. Um so we're talking about global referrals, global attraction, um, but we open those up to the last Wednesday of every month is opened up to anyone. I mean, you don't even have to be AXP to come on it. So, um, but any, any way I can help you all, let me know. Um, uh, obviously, I'm on get on that. If anybody wants to get on that. Um, it is, that's a good, uh, I will send you the link and maybe you can get, I don't know how, uh, it's in our workplace chat. I, that's a good Under question. Luxury. Know okay. how to tell everybody. We can, to we can get it. Uh, I'll I'll get that either from I'll I'll get it from either you or luxury, and, and what, we'll post that on workplace. What specifically is this under? Uh, just under the EXP marketing. Uh, this is EXP luxury. Is what it's. But under. if we go into the marketing center, we should be able to find it there. Or is it uh, separate? have to be part it's, of the luxury it's locked down that i was just showing what the luxury program offered it is okay. that is an annual fee so it is you can't get to it without a presentation and and here's the thing and if there's any interest of anybody that wants to just see there's no just wants to see the full dashboard, let me know. We have presentations all the time and um, it only takes about 20 minutes and you could see what the value of it. But again, it's just, it is part of our company. Um, so if you're interested, let me know and um, we'll take it from there. I'm going to guess right now, Carrie, all this stuff is in workplace, right? Yeah. Like for people that are, right? Like you go to workplace and look up EXP Luxury and find you all You go the to expluxury.com is the EXP okay. Luxury website, and you'll be able to see a, a lot of this. Um, you'll see our countries, and we're adding to that. But the actual program itself, we would have to show you um, because it is locked to just members only. Right. Right. So yeah, so it's so good. But I was going to say, you said you do them all the time. Is there a standing time that you could? There um, are appointment, they are appointment only. So okay. here's, uh, Kathy, if you want to see who's interested in just a demo. Yeah. And it won't be one of these meetings. It will just be a demo that we come in. They're only 30 minutes long and they're very informative, but I'd be happy to do one for your group. Okay. So message me um, on Workplace, everybody, if you guys want to have a demo of what EXP offers, and then we can get that set up with Carrie. So just shoot me a message on Workplace, and uh, I'll coordinate 
a topic. And one one more plug for that. It is amazing the groups we're winning. Um, you know, I help a lot of people. Not only do I do this all day, but I do help. Like if you had a, a client or an agent that you're attracting, um, a lot of the times they call me and we seal the deal, especially if they're luxury. Uh, just last week, I stole three people from, they were going to Compass from another company, but we were trying to get them at EXP stolen because when they compared what Compass offered in luxury compared to what EXP offers, it was a no brainer. So I want to put that out there. If you are growing your attraction business, luxury is a great way to do that. And um, and we're rolling out some more things at EXP Con that I think you'll be excited about for our luxury program as well. Oh, 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 oh,